Hi there, and welcome back to a fourth section of the ProtoPy course. Today we're going to learn about gestures. So we're going to use a drag, and once it's dragged, you're going to see that we can control a bunch of elements such as the cards underneath, but also the color in the background. And we're going to listen to touchdown as well as touch up so that when you release, the card is going to come back to its original position. So we're back to this template where we have the home screen, we have the scroll, and then we have the layers. What we're going to do here is we're going to set it so that the first card is going to have a drag gesture. So I'm going to add a trigger and click on drag. Using the drag trigger, I can add a response, either move, scale, or rotate. But most often it's going to be move. So when you do that, that means that when you drag, it's simply going to move to where you're dragging like this. Now I could have used rotate, but rotate is different. So when you drag, it's going to start rotating. And I can also add scale. So when I drag, it's also going to scale my object. And I'm combining all of them. I can just turn them off. So without move, now it's just going to be rotate. So I'm just going to use move for now and disable rotate, enable move. And I can decide to make it horizontal only or vertical only. But in this case, I'm going to use both X and Y. But the thing is, you can see here, we're kind of limited with only three responses. And that's because the drag is very specific and it automatically detects the progress by itself and applies that to move, rotate, and scale. If you want to use more types of animation, you want to, first of all, select card and then add a touchdown. So when it's touchdown, it's when we are dragging. And so I can decide, for example, to change the opacity on these layers. So to do that, I'm going to first group them together. So all five of these and do command G to group, just like in the design tool. And I'm going to name this transactions. And here, while I have this selected, I'm going to add response call opacity. And here I'm going to set opacity zero. So what's going to happen is that when I'm dragging, you can see that the opacity changes for these layers. But we want to come back to our original state when we release the drag. So in order to achieve that, we're going to add another trigger called touch up. And here I forgot to select uh, the card one. So I'm going to have to select it from this list and you can search it. So card one, for example, and voila, it does the same thing. So here I'm going to set opacity back for the transactions. So select transactions and set opacity and change the opacity back to 100. Now when I drag and when I release, it comes back. And finally, when I release, I want to reset the position of my card. So I'm going to select card one and then add a response right here and set it to reset. So now when I release, it just comes back to its original position. Now let's take a look at uh, the animation timing. So usually for opacity, you don't really need easing and out. Usually you can you just have linear and it's totally fine. But for reset, uh, which in this case, because we're moving to a different position, um, we can set it to spring to make it more interesting. So when we release, it's going to bounce back. And as you can see, the further we are, the more it's going to bounce. And if we're very near, it's not going to bounce much. So that's, again, the power of spring. OK, so the next thing we want to animate during the drag is these cards underneath. So we're going to select card two and set, let's say, the scale. We're going to use the factor and set it to 105. So it's going to grow a little bit and we just need to reset it um, for the card two as well. So here, selecting card two, I'm going to reset as well. 
I'm gonna do the same for car 3 so scale using a factor 105 and reset so both of them are increasing in size while I'm dragging and for the car 3 I want to add a little bit of delay so shift right arrow and you can see it makes things a little bit more interesting and the same for the reset on the car 3 we're gonna set to a 0.1 delay as well okay to be consistent we can also use spring so for these scale I'm gonna set spring and for these reset I'm also going to set to spring. It's looking good. Now what's left is we want to move the cards as well so we can see the content of the card. So the second card is going to be here and the third card is going to be here. So I'm going to go to the second card and I'm going to add a move. So you can set uh, to a specific position of the move in terms of X and Y position, but you can also set by so plus 200 so for example if i do move by that means it's going to move 200 down to where it is right now so when i move you can see that the second card is moving by 200 and we're going to do the same thing for the third card and here move by 400 so now I see both cards and because of the spring it bounces quite a bit and it makes things even more interesting. The last thing I want to do is to change the background color when I'm moving. So that's easy. I'm going to use the scroll as the background. So the scroll has a fill property. If you want to change that for example you can see the change right here and what I'm going to do is gonna reset that first of all and then I'm gonna go to touchdown select the scroll and then do a color animation the color animation can use any of these colors so you can experiment with this and now you can see it changes the background as well now I can do a reset on the scroll so I'm gonna select scroll and I can do a reset but the thing is, reset actually resets every single property of, of that. So that includes, let's say, if you start with a scroll position or any other things that you have changed. So that might not be what you want. So for example, if I'm scrolling and I'm releasing, now it's going to reset also the scroll position. So you can also avoid that by simply not use a reset and just do a simple color animation back. So I'm gonna select this one, get the color property, and add a color animation, set it back to that color property. So like this, even if you scroll and you drag, it's not going to reset the scroll position. So that's one thing to keep in mind because reset is really powerful. And that's why we didn't have to do like multiple animations such as opacity, scale, and move. I can just do one animation, reset, and it's going to reset all of these properties that we have changed so far. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. And obviously, as usual, definitely play a lot with the animations, the timing of the animation, and uh, have fun with it. In the next session, we're going to learn how to have multiple animation states using conditions. And so you can toggle back and forth between, let's say, the menu that comes from the left and then coming back to the home screen. So hopefully I'll see you there.